the song of Gabriel. Yeah, we wrote a song and we call it Give Me a Break. Okay for an hour. That's a good amount of time. Hello, good to have you with us on Red Barn Radio. I'm Brad Becker. This is Red Barn Radio's 19th season, and tonight we welcome you to show number 715. <laughs> to keep our staff and our musical guests safe, we will continue to abide by state and local guidelines concerning cleanliness and personal protective equipment. For now, you, the online viewers and radio listeners, are the Red Barn Radio audience. This evening, we bring to the Red Barn stage Lilac, an indie rock quartet based in Lexington, Kentucky. The band started in 2015 as a solo project of Gideon Mackey, who gradually added diverse members who worked together to develop a sound we think you will really enjoy. Please welcome Lilac to Red Barn Radio. Hi, we're Lilac, and this is Gabriel. I haven't seen you in a while And I've been wondering where to go from here Gabriel What am I supposed to do? Is the writing on the wall
with the prince of peace Good evening, and welcome to Red Barn Radio. Wherever in the world you're listening, welcome to Roots Music Southern Style. Thanks to WEKU, Red Barn Radio's official radio partner, NPR for Central and Eastern Kentucky. Listen online at WEKU.org. Red Barn Radio is supported by Visit Lex, Lexington, Kentucky's Convention and Visitors Bureau. More information on what Lexington has to offer is at visitlex.com. LexArts, Lexington, Kentucky's premier cultural development, advocacy, and fundraising organization, working for the development of a strong and vibrant arts community as a means of enhancing the quality of life in Central Kentucky. Follow Red Barn Radio on Twitter and like us on Facebook. Here's the host of Red Barn Radio to tell us more about tonight's performers. This evening on Red Barn Radio, we bring you the band Lilac. The unique musical styles of this group of players pull together an eclectic sonic experience we think you'll enjoy. Lilac's members are Gideon Mackey, Elizabeth and Paul Varnado, and Zach Martin. Welcome back, Lilac. Thanks for having us. This next song is called Stones.
Thanks. Thank, thank you guys so much. Thanks for tuning in on the live stream. Yeah. We are so happy to be here at Red Barn. Um, we've been wanting to be here for a little while now, so very thankful to be here with you guys. Thanks to Brad, the whole team. Uh, we'll keep it keep it rolling. Alrighty. Yeah. So uh, this next song is called What We Have. It's a single we released in 2018, um, and it's a love song. So prepare yourselves. It's time to throw the towel in When you shout like that the walls fall down I can hear you from the other room And I don't want to know what's coming next So when you come so much Brad I really like your uh, your fence in area over there it's quite nice yeah <laughs> in case we decide to jump over it start a mosh pit I will say from the broadcast it looks like you're in a different room maybe we just ruined the secret <laughs> uh, this next song that we're gonna play um, 
is an older one. We released it in 2017, but had been playing it live for uh, a couple years before then. And um, it's a, a song about my family, and it's called Start Again. When it's time to start again We pack our bags and leave the state we're not going on vacation We're saying goodbye When you first met There was spark that lit the fire But something in this world Turns the shine of a pearl gray And creeps into your house And waits by your door And like the ghost in my dreams They never go to bed Thought of that place still lives in my head. In your heart of hearts, is there room enough to move? Is time long enough to fix? Sounds great, folks. Well, thank you. Wonderful to have you all with us uh, viewing the, the live stream uh, and then listening to our radio broadcast. My name is Brad Becker, and you're listening to Red Barn Radio. Our guest tonight is Lilac. They're a four-piece here from Lexington, Kentucky. And um, while uh, Gideon, uh, the, the sort of archetypical Kentucky music story is usually set in the mountains or in some hollow seam between mountains, mm -hmm. uh, usually includes a, a banjo or uh, a fiddle. And, uh, but you, your story seems, uh, seems very different and, and really your music doesn't really seem to me confined to any place in particular. Can you uh, kind of tell uh, your story about how you started yeah. this, uh, this work? Yeah, man. Um, uh, you're right. I don't know how to play banjo. Um, I actually really only know how to play guitar. I've I've tried to play other instruments. Um, my dad got me uh, my first guitar when I was eight years old. He uh, hid it in a closet and gave me a little treasure map to find it. Um, and you know, I was just over the moon excited um, and kind of grew up playing worship music with him. 
um, learning chords through those types of songs. Um, and that wasn't in Kentucky. That was, I think, in Virginia when we lived in Virginia. Um, so moved to Kentucky early 2000s and started, um, you know, my song career in elementary school uh, for the fifth grade talent show. I wrote an original song <laughs> that I still remember how to play, but I will never play it for anybody. <laughs> um, but I kind of fell in love with songwriting around that time. Um, so yeah, that's kind of that's kind of where things started. Um, yeah. Yeah, and you. Uh, so I'm I'm kind of curious if if you don't mind sort of elaborating a little bit more on mm. the the song "Start Again." Mm -hmm. uh, you said it's about your family, and and it sounded at least on some level like it was about um, you know picking up and and moving on to another place, and and there may be much more to it than that. But yeah. what, uh, did you move around a lot growing up? Yeah, I moved around a lot growing up. Um, Why is that? My dad uh, pastored several different churches, mm -hmm. um, so we were, uh, for whatever reason, on the move uh, several times. Um, that song specifically is kind of a heartbreak song um, about my folks splitting up. Um, we moved from Michigan to Kentucky, and so that's kind of a story about that painful um, transition, but also me looking at my folks and kind of navigating through that on my own. Um, so yeah, it's most definitely a song about picking up and, and moving to a new place. Um, and I, I tried to think about the different visuals uh, from those memories that I have. We took a Greyhound bus mm -hmm. um, down and I'll never forget that, it's just sitting with you know my mom and my siblings in the Greyhound bus. Huh. Um, so yeah. And so you all, so you all moved uh, down here, not for your dad to take a church down here, is, did, did your dad, did your dad? Uh, we originally, so we were moving around all over the place. We, we originally moved down here so he could uh, go to school. And what's funny, um, and honestly, just a huge blessing for the whole family is that uh, we're all still in Kentucky. Um, and, e you know, even after um, all of that. So, um, yeah. Yeah, talk about then. So you, you, uh, you developed as a musician in the church then. Largely, right? Growing up, mm -hmm. and and you, you said you played a lot of worship music, and then um, at what point did you start to to sort of branch away from from doing music specifically, sort of in that idiom, and and doing other kinds of things? Well, um, I think that my first experience with you know um, music that wasn't conventional or something, you know, or apart from like the the, the, the three chords that you first learn is when I took one of those first chords and I realized that you could, you know, move it up the guitar neck. And then it was like, oh my goodness, this is, this is amazing. And I want to figure out everything that I can possibly do with this. And, um, I by no means, you know, um, consider myself, you know, a, a good guitar player or anything, but I love finding, finding, you know, interesting sounds through the guitar. And I think that that was kind of the introduction of that. And it kind of just led into, um, a life of trying to find melody through the guitar and then later on it would become trying to find uh, melody through voice as well as the guitar so well well since you since you said it I'll ask you um, is is it your goal to be uh, a different kind of guitar player than you are because it seems to us that you you I mean play good I just like don't I don't a word it just takes so much time to play as good as the other guys do and and <laughs> <laughs> what other so guys? So it's easy. It's easier to just try to find your own style. Uh. I think I think that's also kind of the artist temperament is that you're always kind of looking for something beyond. Like you have a goal that's always a little bit ahead of where you are in the moment. I think. I think yeah, and, and and that can that can sort of erode into sort of a bad place too, right? So you have True, to kind of, yeah, you get kind too of self-deprecating. <laughs> yeah. Right. Do you, do you uh, are you hard on yourself uh, as a as a musician, Gideon? Um, I think that I I send the band like like ten percent of the, the of the stuff that I write, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> which you know I I think like it's important you know what I love about um, being in a band is that you can be vulnerable with people, um, and so I think it's a most definitely a road and a process to even bring your ideas that you're not confident in. Um, 
but I think a lot of times I am like, I'll write something and be like, oh, you know, that's, that's not going to work. And sometimes yeah. you know it's not going to work, you know, but you end up also throwing a lot of, uh, you know, possible ideas out that in the, in the workshop with the band could potentially blossom into something, you know? Yeah. Well, uh, Gideon, let's talk about the evolution of Lilac. Did it, yeah. did it begin as Lilac when it was just, uh, when it was just Gideon? So I, I used to play, um, my first band was a band called Absalom, Absalom, and we played around Lexington in early college. Um, and when I, I played guitar in that band, I didn't sing. Um, after that ended, I wanted to keep playing music and I had some songs that I've been working on. So um, I somehow got the keys uh, by good graces of a dear friend of mine um, to use his studio and I had no idea what I was doing. Um, and I started recording those songs. And that's when I met Paul and Elizabeth was around that time in, I think, 2015? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Around then. Um, met them at a Halloween party. And I found out that <laughs> Paul played bass. Ooh. And I was like, hey, man. It was the same night. And I had no, no desire to be in a band. I had just met this person. He was like, I'm tracking this EP. And I kind of threw my hands up. I have no interest in being in a band, but I will come and record some songs. And then the first time we hang out, uh, we hung out, he changed arrangements of songs based upon bass parts and <laughs> was completely like, this is as much your song now that you've contributed to it as it is mine. And so I said, if you ever play a show, I'll play a show. And then we <laughs> played that show and I said, okay, you, you need anything <laughs> literally <laughs> like coat off my back, whatever, um, so. Yeah, so what, yeah, what happened that, that sort of endeared you? Uh, I think he wooed me um, <laughs> with mm -hmm. an IPA chips. and uh, uh, potato chips. Flavored potato mm. chips. Yeah, um, I won't say the specific brand, but they were a Coke, they were uh, fried in coconut oil and they were a red curry flavor, and that's pretty yeah. good. A Once red we got curry. told that our, our band really revolves around food, which is uh, very true, actually. That's very healthy. We always eat together, and we're always sharing snacks. <laughs> well, that will uh, that may keep you together as much as anything, <laughs> is providing you all can share some of the same, uh, some of the same foods. Um, so uh, I, I'm really looking forward to getting to talk to all of you and getting to know all of you and, and helping the, our audience uh, understand who you are and, and what you do and what you bring. Um, I'm, I'm kind of curious, uh, your, your next set uh, begins with a couple of tunes that come from the uh, Suite for Spirits yeah. EP, right? And this, these are songs, um, sounds like songs about um, d departed people who are somehow still in our midst, I guess. Yeah. Um, can, you, can you tell us about, um, can you tell us about times like these and Isabella, the first two songs you'll play in this second set? Did, who wrote those? We wrote times like these together. Um, and then I wrote Isabella and Gideon wrote Ethel Drive. And um, we were working on an album this year on recording an album and Ethel Drive didn't make the cut, but we knew we wanted to record that kind of in a more acoustic setting sometime this year. And then um, I got to go to the beach this year. And as I was walking on the beach, this song that I wrote many, many years ago, Isabella kind of popped in my head because in the, the, the character, the spirit is walking on the beach. And so I thought, oh, what if we, what if we made like a, a suite where we have um, this song about Isabella and then a song about Rachel, who is the, the um, soul that Ethel Drive is about. And then we need a third one. And so Gideon came over sometime in the summer and he had listened to this podcast. Um, I'll let you talk about that part of it. But um, we, we sat down and we kind of started hashing out these ideas um, about kind of like paranoia in your house and maybe hearing something in your house. Um, and then it, it kind of melded with this other story for times like these. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Kind of roughly based on the story of a gentleman um, that... I believe still lives in Chattanooga, Tennessee. And I only know the story because I think of Snap Judgment or Radio Lab, one of those podcasts. But, <laughs> um, uh. but it's a really incredible story. He uh, was a TV repairsman and um, he became kind of a recluse and um, in his house with his wife. And 
became very paranoid in his later years and his wife ended up passing um, and the whole town believed that he had um, killed his wife. Um, and so him and a lawyer kind of team up and um, it's a really amazing case. Um, but it turns out she had epilepsy and, um, and really why she stayed inside is because she had trouble going outside and they were just so deeply in love. And he was so removed from society that he had a hard time explaining, you know, um, what had actually happened. And uh, so that merged with some other ideas of paranoia um, and what it's like to spend too much time alone is what form <laughs> times like these. All right. Yeah. All right. Hey, folks, we're talking uh, tonight with Lilac, who is on Red Barn Radio with us here. And uh, we're going to get back to the music with them. Welcome back, Lilac. Thanks so much. This is times like these. Are the children covered up in blankets? Are their toes tucked inside? Did you walk all the way down the hall to make sure everything's all right? twice so you can sleep through the night because it's times like these don't know who's listening and for the life of me did something touch my sleep because it's times like these Something touch my sleep. Ooh. Walls plastered with her words. I'm breathing. Dusty air. Did I do enough here for me to meet you there? Cause it's times like these. They call me paranoid. Don't know who's listening and for the life of me. Did something touch my sleeve? Cause it's times like these. Sleep, Cause it's times like these Saying I miss you doesn't bring you back to me Doesn't bring you back to me Thanks, Thanks so much so this next song is called Isabella, um, and I actually, this song itself is kind of a ghost. I actually wrote this song in 2007, um, which was one of the very first songs I ever wrote. Um, so I didn't play it for a long time, and then it kind of came back to me this summer. Um, so yeah, it has a ghostly character uh, of its own. Um, but the the picture, the the soul in this in this story. Um, is a, an old woman that's kind of stuck in a very childlike mindset. Um, and she tends to sort of dangerously wander off um, in various uh, states of psychosis. But she's happy. Um, she finds a lot of joy in her life, even though other people around her um, aren't quite sure where it is that she goes. <laughs> Oh, 
da da o la di da 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 o la di da 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 o la di da 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 We are going back to full band now. <laughs> um, so as Elizabeth mentioned earlier, um, we tracked an album um, during quarantine. In June. In June. Mm -hmm. And we're going to play a couple songs off that. So these are completely unreleased. But the EP is released. We released that on Halloween, yes. October 31st. But now we'll play songs that aren't released. <laughs> All right, uh, this next one is called Bones. You guys ready? Yeah, now I'm ready. <laughs> 
on my bones So then I'll know which one hurts the most I wanna love you without loving myself Cause at least I'm thinking about somebody else I tried to be a better man But it's so Shadow peeking out from underneath your door I want to shake out all the rugs So I can see what I've been standing Time for me to get there. Try to be the thing you need without looking at myself. Without looking at myself. to me to lay my head Cause I'm starting to see double Of all the stupid things I said and did This one's gotta be real good I tried to be so much that was bones uh so this next song i wrote um about a time that i had a fever so bad i started hallucinating and uh my friend had to drive me on the interstate so i could fall asleep shout out to friends who do weird things for you <laughs> and that wasn't this week was it no no that wasn't okay. this week was not, it not within a the last 20 fever not within the fort last 14 days you haven't had a fever Okay. <laughs>
I didn't know how to catch my breath Before we get on with more music from Lilac, I'd like to tell you about what's happening next week. We've got Sean Benfield with us. Sean is a singer, songwriter, and multi-instrumentalist hailing from Southern West Virginia. He's developed his music over the past 20 years, and uh, the result is a sound that's both raw and passionate. I know you're going to like it. So join us next week for Sean Benfield. Um, you won't be sorry. Roots Music Southern Style. That's what Red Barn Radio is about. And we are glad you are here with us tonight. So let's get on with tonight's Red Barn Radio program. Red Barn Radio is coming to you live on our social media platforms from the Arts Place Performance Hall here in the great city of Lexington, Kentucky. Please welcome back Lilac to the Red Barn stage. Hey, hey, hey. Thanks for hanging out with us, everybody live streaming. Happy to be here. Uh, this next one is called Balance Beam, and it's off of our second EP that we put out, or our third EP that we put out, um, called Leave It to Light.
to balance payments And we're at it again I played both ends Of the same two lines I remember before When time wasn't a chore I didn't have to impress you With my balancing act You said your goodbyes to all those places you've been spending your time. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. And when the night. I still lay awake Haunted by memories That we didn't make And the life for me I can't figure out balance beam hope you guys are doing well out there Brad you good yeah. rock and roll you guys good couldn't be better, couldn't be better. I'm ready <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh <laughs> what Gotcha. Okay. Oh, goodness. Note it. Uh, this next one is called Someone Who Cares. Um, if you've been to a show of ours, we will probably have played this song, most likely. And maybe, and maybe someone danced. Maybe someone danced. Yeah, maybe we gave you a T-shirt. Yeah. And maybe we have a music video of this song uh, where a few of us wear a T-Rex inflatable <laughs> dinosaur costume. <laughs> if you want to check it out. Thank 
you'll be alone Cause lately If things have failed A little bit Unsure And you have your ways I have mine too Let's meet somewhere in the middle They say That time will heal our wounds But lately Time has been such a fool Don't want to miss What's been in front of me This whole time Up till now This whole time Up till now Martin would like to um, elevate the use of vibraslap in rock and roll music, and I am helping that cause. Um, this next song I wrote about a memory I have um, of me and my mom. Back when I was a kid, she uh, delivered papers for a paper route. Um, and sometimes she would wake me up in the very early hours of the morning um, to help her. And I was always, you know, pretty, pretty frustrated because I wanted to sleep. It was like 3 o'clock in the morning. But um, we had some really good times hanging out. Um, that's when the TV show Lost was on ABC. And uh, I generally would have just watched an episode. And so as uh, she was driving and I was folding papers in the back seat, I would literally go through the entire episode that I had seen and explain it to her. Um, I don't know if she liked that or not, but it was a, it was a pretty fun time. It. So I wrote this song called Paper Out. It's been overdue 
And I still see the sky From the Saturn you used to drive Making faces at me through the night Before we had a thing to lose Oh, 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 oh. oh. Gideon, I'd like to uh, move around now and, and talk to uh, some of the other members of the band. Um, uh, I'd like to start back in the back with uh, the Zach, hey. with Zach Martin. And uh, yeah, if you would mind, yeah, move that mic to you. Uh, this has been a, a sonic uh, feast tonight uh, with many, all manner of uh, percussive tools at work up here, including um, uh, Elizabeth, the one you just mentioned which um, we call the Survivor Slap. Survivor Slap. Th that is the name of it. Yeah. I never knew that right that there. was. The, I. <laughs> that's that's not just the brand name. It's actually the name of that instrument. It's the name of the instrument. Wow. I, I did not know that. Maybe everyone else watching this program and everyone in this room knows that, but I did not know that. And uh, I'm a lifelong learner, so I learned a lot tonight already. Um, Zach. Uh, you're a great player. I would love for you to tell about your um, sort of music story with a special emphasis on your uh, training as a percussionist. I was a musical family. Um, just fell in love with drums at a young age. How early? You know, uh, I think I was eight. I was um, at a friend's house and his older brother had a drum kit and uh, yeah. And so, yeah, and so um, when you, so you then brought that interest into your household and was, was your family um, game for that? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, always. Yeah. My, yeah, my parents, it's, I, I think it takes a lot of sacrifice to raise a drummer, you know, like <laughs> spatial, Indeed. it's a big, it takes up a lot of space, it's loud, you know, and um I don't think my parents could have been better about it. And um, even my mother, who doesn't play an instrument, would notice, you know, she, she really likes the, the buzz rolls or the, like the different drum, drum, drum rolls and uh, would comment on those and have fun. And she'd tell me music she liked to dance to. And, and my dad showed me a lot of music. He's a killer sax player and um, he's a 
the sound engineer and um, just grew up with a lot of it. Was he a sound engineer for a living or, or as a hobby? For a living. Oh, yeah. he was. Here in Kentucky? No, it was out uh, west where we're from in uh, Portland, Oregon. Okay. Yeah, it was a company called Rose City Sound back then. Wow, so you grew up, did you grow up in that environment, in an environment where um, that, that activity was going on? Or were you able to like go to a studio as a young person and see some of that, or were you too young? I, I would have been too young at that point. At some point, uh, uh, he, he became a pastor, and um, uh, that was probably, yeah, I'm gonna get all these facts wrong. I might have been three when he became a pastor. We wouldn't more full know. Time. Yeah, well. <laughs> we, we, we. Uh, <laughs> um, and so it was kind of more in that world. But he still, he would still do it from time to time. And he always loved it, you know. And he's brilliant at it. So it's kind of, he couldn't really get away from it, you know. And uh, he'll still run sound for us sometimes and other events. And yeah. So music is, uh, is kind of a genetic thread uh, for you. Um, and um, did you get some training along the way that was important for you? Because you, you seem, you don't seem like a completely self-taught guy. It seems like somebody along the lines expressed to you the importance of learning your rudiments and all mm -hmm. of those kinds of things. True? Yeah. Yeah, I, um, maybe I was 11. I started taking drum lessons. And um, a guy in town named Bo Warren is a great multi-instrumentalist. Um, and I, I could probably, he could probably charge me one day for all the stuff I directly steal from him. You know, <laughs> I still use it every, every time I play. Ideas or equipment? Uh, ideas. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we don't always see eye to eye on equipment, <laughs> but he's great. And then I went to college for it for a little while and I moved back out to Oregon, um, to study under a specific teacher. And I did that for two years and, um, yeah, it was like two years never leaving his office and uh -huh. always on a practice pad and always at 52 BPM, you know. Uh -huh. And uh, it seemed boring for like a week, but then you get it that he's a kind of genius. <laughs> and you're like, okay, whatever you say, man. Uh -huh. And that's where I felt the most growth between those two teachers, for sure. Wow. You're a great player. Thank you. Yeah, I really, really enjoy what you bring to the, to the music always. Um, all right, good. And we were talking with Paul Varnado earlier. You remember that Paul is the bass player who uh, considered himself too good to be part of a band. Um, <laughs> Paul, you want to pick up on that story a little bit? Um, less <laughs> too good to be part of a band and um, more realistic about time. But Gideon was worth uh, reprioritizing. And uh, yeah, very was, nice. Uh, best buds. Very um, nice. A lot of love there. Yeah, so it was, it was Gideon and then. Uh, Gideon and me, um, and then uh, Zach moved back to Lexington. And um, wow! And then so, what, what about your uh, story? What, what about your story? How'd you learn? Um, I learned because I wanted to be um, in a band. I was in a band when I was twelve. Um, it was a post-hardcore band, so I screamed, and then our our bassist quit. Um, and I got an Ibanez for maybe $200 and started playing. And then um, it wasn't until I was maybe 14, 15 that I played regularly. Um, but like, like Gideon, like Zach, like Elizabeth, uh, starting in the church and then kind of moving outward. Ah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, so you guys share these things in common, at least the three of you. We haven't gotten to Elizabeth yet. <laughs> what, so what brought you to Lexington? Because this isn't where you're from. Uh, this isn't where I'm from. Uh, I was born in Staten Island, New York, um, moved around a lot, ended up in Lexington in 2009 to start school. I went to UK for electrical engineering. Um, and while I was at UK, I met Elizabeth and we started dating and now we're married and um, now in a band, which yeah, some, some weeks it seems like we're talking more about the band than... <laughs> Um, the things I leave on the floor. <laughs> well, this is this is good. This is good. Music can do lots of good things yeah. for relationships. Mm -hmm. um, and and uh, well, thanks, thanks. Yeah. yeah. And Elizabeth, uh, are you 
went to you're you're from Kentucky. Yes. This is like did did I hear you say that you're the only native Kentuckian I am. on I've the never stage? I really realized it. Um yeah, so my parents aren't from Kentucky, so um they moved to Louisville before I was born and that's where I was born um and grew up and then came to UK for school. Um changed my major to music by Labor Day. So like within two oh. weeks <laughs> of <laughs> within two weeks of being a journalism major, I was like, oh wait, uh, why am I not in the school of music? So um, then I played violin um, in the symphony orchestra at UK all through um, through college. Education and major or performance major? I was ed, and then I switched to just a BA. So I'm working on my. Um, my PhD in musicology right now. So that was always kind of the goal. It's just been a long time kind of working towards that. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So musicology, tell yeah. us uh, about about that and your special interest uh, in that field. Yeah. Well, basically, I mean, the best way to explain it is I kind of just like eat, live and breathe music. And I think in music and I just, ever since I was a little kid, I've just kind of, it's the thing that I've always done. Um, and so now in musicology, I really love music history. Um, I just wrapped up today, I wrapped up two, um, two sections teaching music appreciation, which I really enjoy. I love introducing students oh. to music they've never heard before. <laughs> um, and so I love, I love the teaching aspect of it. And then the research and writing is also something I'm really interested in. Um, and my dissertation is on music festivals, which uh, 2020 kind of <laughs> put a big wrench in that plan. Um, but <laughs> I've kind of just been waiting it out, sort of waiting to see like what happens this year, how it all shakes out. Um, but I'll keep working on that um, and hopefully finish within the next couple of years. Well, it seems yeah. like a good uh, new topic could be uh, could be virtual festivals. Yeah. I mean, really, it's yeah. pretty fascinating, um, you know, territory really mm -hmm. it's a hard field to research because it's it's new and it's changing a lot it changes you know live music and music in general changes very quickly so um it's it can be a challenge to capture it and write about it um uh, but i'm i'm doing my best to meet that challenge <laughs> <laughs> how long is it going to take you to to finish your phd um, or how long do you i should say how long do you have i have until <laughs> i have five years and i've taken i've i've taken up I think a, a year or two of those at this point, a year and a half of those of that time. So. Five years is the amount of time it takes to get that degree, to, or do, do you mean that you have that much time to complete it? You have that much time to write the dissertation. Gotcha. I don't want to take that much time, but that's how much time I have. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And w what about your uh, your training on the violin? Uh, yeah. Did you have, uh, were you were you classically trained? Did you ever play uh, popular or improvisational music before you uh, joined up with these guys to do this? I did. Um, so like we've all mentioned, uh, my dad was also a worship leader when I was a kid. <laughs> um, so I grew up, um, and my whole family is very musical, and music was like just something that we did around the house. Um, so my dad plays piano quite well, and he taught me piano chords. Um, and then I started playing when I was like, when I was eight, I guess. Um, and pretty quickly, like as soon as I learned to bow, um, my dad had me starting to play along, um, with the nut, with the letters on the chord charts. Um, and then pretty soon I learned, okay, well, if it's a D, then I can also play an F sharp and an A cause he was teaching me the piano chords too. So. Um, yeah, I'm really, I'm really thankful to my dad. I'm sure he's watching right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really thankful to my dad for introducing me to improv because my classical training never exercised that muscle at all. Um, it just really, you know, exercised and strengthened my chops. Um, and then when I got out of college, I was, I had, I really enjoyed playing in the symphony, but I was pretty much done with playing off the page and really wanted mm -hmm. to explore what kind of music I could make outside of that. And so you started off as a journalism major, so you have some yeah. interest in writing, yeah. and 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 you've not been for able very to long was I a journalism major. Well, but, yeah. but, but but you obviously went into that because yes. you had a knack yeah, for like for yeah. mm -hmm. parlaying your ideas into into you know printed page. Yes. And um, talk about uh, talk about how that's played into um, into this work with uh, in in music. Had you ever yeah. written music? Um, 
What, was 15 the first song that you wrote, the, the yeah. song that you were talking about earlier? Oh, yeah, Isabella. Um, it's one of the first I wrote. I've been writing songs, like, for as long as I can, you know, for a very long time I've been making up little songs. Um, but Isabella was kind of the first one that I, like, started it front to back and then was like, okay, this is a, this is a song that this, <laughs> this sounds like something people would want to hear. <laughs> um, and so I'm a really, I'm a slow songwriter. Um, I write a lot. I, you know, I journal, I write poems. Um, I write, obviously, you know, when you're a teacher, when you're a researcher, you write a lot for other things. Um, so I don't, I don't quite, I'm not like a song pumper. I don't like pump out songs. Yeah, right. Um, but I always, yeah, the, the words are really important to me, and I usually build off of that. So is it important, and this is a question for, for you too, Gideon, um, is it important for you guys to be doing music that you think um, people will want to hear? <laughs> it, you know, uh, it, it, it feels nice when people like the songs. Yeah. I mean, like, sure, I, I, that was a very obvious answer, but it is hard to resist writing a song, a repeat song, you know, because you know that you that folks might mm -hmm, like it. Mm -hmm. You know, like, um, I think that that can be a positive thing and a negative thing because, you know, I, we might get, like, stuck in a rut or something if we're trying to write the same songs over and over again. Um, but at the same time, that can be a, a fuel to the fire to kind of, like, get the groove going. Um, so, I don't know. What yeah. do you think? I think, for me... I don't always think about what are people going to think of this song until I'm playing it. Obviously, once I'm playing it in front of people, then I'm like, whoa, I hope they like this. Um, when I'm creating it, I don't, I don't necessarily think of that. Um, but I was really steeped, like just myself, I was steeped in a, lot of, in a lot of popular music with a lot of, you know, strong harmonies and lyrics that you can relate to and, um, and you know, beautiful melodies, and and I think like that's what I hope, that's what I hope to make um, when I when I write songs and when I bring songs to life as well. So yeah, well, I mean, your, your music is really beautiful, and but but it's, you know, it's, it's very cerebral, and <laughs> <Yeah>. and um, <laughs> I, you know, I, I guess what I'm wondering is, do you all um, also think about developing um, a, another sort of core group of you know songs, core content? that, um, y you know, they can rock a house. Hmm. No, I'm just curious, that, you know, what other kind of venues have you all, you all played? You're playing this tonight, oh, and yeah. it's, it's, a, it's yeah. a venue where you know everyone's listening mm -hmm. and, you know, dialed into the, the lyric, dialed into the, the nuances in the songs. Mm -hmm. um, what about those environments where there are the clinking glasses and the, the people yelling and slamming I see, yeah. things? Yeah, yeah, we've we've <laughs> slamming things down. yelling. We like yeah. that too. Um, yeah. We last fall we went on tour and we did a lot of house shows, but we did a couple of like venue shows, and we kind of came up with this idea of like red versions and blue versions. So it's not like loud and and soft, but it's like red is like for the bars. Red is for like to rock the house when people are talking over you, yelling over you, having a good time in the same room that you're in. And then blue is more for like something like this. Oh, nice, but so they were the same songs, just different um, different attitudes yeah. to them. So you could still sort of inhabit the songs and then inhabit the lyrics, but at, but maybe no one in the audience would necessarily know that you were you know deep into the lyric. They were just being like, you're here there to entertain them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah nice. Well, I, I just love what you guys do, and I'm sorry, I don't mean to be hurrying at this point. <laughs> it's okay. um, I'm, but I'm, I'm really hurrying because I can't wait to hear more of your music. Uh, it's been so much fun having you guys here, and I look forward to getting to know you all better over time, and um, hope we can get you to come back sometime. We'll yeah. just pick up where we left We're off. We're enjoying it so far. Yeah, so are, <laughs> so are we. Welcome back, everybody. Lilac on Red Barn. Um, this is a song called 13 Fold, and I wrote it about my friend's house. She lives in a pre-Civil War house, and uh, if you've ever been in an old house, you know they have a lot of character, and that's what this is about.
Your house is always better after dark When light reflects through lead windows And I can barely see to park Oh, you know we all love coming over Even when the front room is cold I'll keep my jacket So build a fire in the stove No matter how long it takes To warm this old house I don't mind to wait Do the dishes late at night Or early in the morning Think about what you gave up Years before when you were You know it will It'll all come back to you thirteenfold All right now, it's not so simple But you are not alone Just give it time It'll all come to you thirteenfold and you don't know how much it means when you tell me you're welcome home your house could tell the story on its own in phrases rearranged for new poems mm -hmm. a ransom note cut from cloth already worn oh it drapes your life in meaning and it makes your house a home oh it drapes your life in meaning and it makes your house a home You know it will It'll all come back to you thirteenfold All right now, it's not so simple But you are not Tell me welcome home change.
Elizabeth plays a really cool guitar in this next song. It's We're all really proud of it. It's called a Griffin. I also call it Charlie because it's my third guitar, so Alpha Bravo Charlie. <laughs> Uh, this next song is called Dandelions, and it's about eating dandelion salad.
We have a lot of fun playing that one. Well, thanks for tuning in, guys. Uh, this next one is a tune we call Beggar, and it's another love song. Yeah? Yeah. Um, shout out to uh, our good friends, Bryce and Savannah. Um, I went to their wedding um, and their first dance. They played this song. Aww. And it about broke my heart. That's probably the biggest compliment. <laughs> I'm a beggar when I need you And right now I don't have much to lose Reaching out my hand to you Thank you so much.
Wonderful. We would like to thank Lilac for being with us this evening. We also thank our volunteers and staff for their help in making our production happen each and every week. Thank you all for listening to our webcast, watching us on YouTube and Twitch, and those listening to us on the Red Barn network of stations. Thanks to WEKU, Red Barn Radio's official radio partner, NPR for Central and Eastern Kentucky. Listen online at weku.org. It's your chance to hear more great live music from Red Barn Radio and WEKU. Red Barn Radio comes to you from our home, the Arts Place Performance Hall in downtown Lexington, Kentucky. We thank LexArts president and CEO, Amy Sweetall, for helping to make the production of Red Barn Radio possible each and every week. Our website has updates and further information on our guests in our program. We are on the web at redbarnradio.com. And now, folks, let's welcome back Lilac uh, to close us out with one more number for the evening. Thanks so much for having us. Uh, this last song is called Roads. Take your time to figure out what it is you're without Take a drive away from home Leave me on my own
Well, that's all for our show this week, uh, but no worries. You can see and hear Red Barn Radio Worldwide each and every week as we stream live on the web, on YouTube, and Twitch. That's every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern in North America. Be sure to check out our social media for updates to our upcoming schedule. And now from all of us here at Red Barn Radio to all of our friends worldwide, it is our hope that you have a great week. Keep working together to be safe and healthy. And until next time, good night. Good night.